Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another fun and always informative episode of The G Show. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Gabriella. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And did you know that about 44% of women that experience a divorce or either uh, become a widow face uncertain financial problems in their life when that happens. I've been looking, as I had told my next guest, many months to try to find a female financial advisor, somebody that could give us some tips on what to do. So that unfortunately does not happen. I like to introduce my guest, Miss Brenda Paulin Walton mm -hmm. from B and B Management Services. Yes. Thank you so much for coming out today. Oh, thank you for having me. I am just so excited to be here. Well, thank you. I want you to know this is a great topic and it's a much needed topic. And I'm glad you found me. Definitely me too, because as I was telling you before, when I was a little girl, finances mm -hmm. weren't something that we had discussed in my family with my mother and I. Mm -hmm. And I it's something that I had come I had problems with, unfortunately, when my uh, husband had passed away and I had mm -hmm. to figure out everything else at this stage of my life. So what it, what is your backstory? How did you get involved to where you are in this <coughs> point right now? In a nutshell, a little a bit. Nutshell. And then let me ask you like what some tips women can do. Well, first, um, I've, I've been a teenage mother. I've been in the streets since I was nine years old. I'm from New York. Um, so I came the long way around. High school dropout, went back, got my GED to college prep, and then I went to an Ivy League school and got my master's in business. With that being said, um, I started my journey on what I was going to do. So I worked in corporate America as an executive marketing director for over 20 years, which was very, very good to me. But then I met a man, he's gone on home now, but he helped me realize that I hit a glass ceiling. After a bad divorce, I was in a very abusive relationship. He helped me start my own business. And what did I do? I got involved in marketing to its finest. Started my own marketing, got a little bit involved in network marketing, and became extremely successful in that. That's where I made the bulk, bulk of my money. So I was able to build a $10 million a month operation in telecommunications with the deregulation of AT&T. My goodness, like just to get to that point, that's like two lifetimes. <laughs> like that's that's a lot and we're not even like all the way through your story. So number one, coming from the streets and getting your master's degree and then going to an Ivy League college, like kudos, like bravo to you because that you. is unbelievable. Mm. But but finish, you were saying that your first uh, first husband had helped you. Um, no, that was my pastor. Oh, I was your in, fat pastor, I apologize. Yes, and okay. he passed, but what was good about it, I was in an abusive relationship and I couldn't see my way out of it. But I had skills, I had talent, but because of the situation I was in, I was unable to see my own skills, my own abilities, that I would be able to take care of myself. And that's the first thing that I'd like to say uh, when it comes to being a woman. We are reared thinking that we do need to be married or in some type of relationship, yes, whether exactly. it's with husband, with children, roommate. We're not taught to do it alone. Finance is not something that we're taught in school, church, or home. Isn't that something else? Mm -hmm. And that's what's so fascinating to me because once you understand the power of it, what it can do for you, not only for your lifestyle, but what it could do for the people around you. So it's great learning how to be in control of your finances. Even though business was my major, what is business? It is the exchange of services or products for money. So therefore, finance comes into play. Of course. You cannot have a service or a product and no dollars change hands. Yes. So this is where it all began for me. And so now after my network marketing uh, explosion, I decided to come into my own world and which I then uh, wrote a program called Esther's House and it was for women living with HIV v AIDS and their dependent children. So there were so many people on the street and they were hurting so badly and the government here was doing nothing it's nothing. just such it's so shameful it's so saddening to hear about to 
actually view that and see that going on. Mm. It was really bad. And for me being a teenage mother coming from that arena, I felt the only thing that I could do was buy as many properties as I could and start providing housing for women living with HIV AIDS. Once the epidemic became under control, then I had all these properties and what was I going to do with them? So that prompted me to my next move. I started my own consulting business, helping 501c3s and other nonprofit organizations start building their business plans, writing programs for grants. And so many people have the myth that they could get a 501c3 and then start getting government funding. I just want to bring the root awareness today in case someone doesn't know. 501c3 doesn't automatically grant you um, grants. Grants are something that is giving to you as an addition to what you already have. So the government doesn't fund ideas at all. Oh my goodness, that's so beneficial to know that because I think a lot, there is a huge misconception with that, definitely. There is a, a, a huge misconception with it. And my biggest thing with it is understanding how to rectify these type of situations. So it's not impossible to get funded, but it is possible, but there are necessary steps. And understanding that the government doesn't fund your ideas, you have to know that they will bring matching funds to your idea. Which is something that's truly incredible. So yeah. let's say hypothetically we have a woman that is in the midst of a divorce. She has no idea where her bank accounts <laughs> are or how much money she has. They always say, know where your bank ac accounts are, mm -hmm. know what accounts you have, know where the deed is to your house, yes. the title to your car. What else, can, what can women do like on the ground floor? Like what can women do to help hopefully make a difference and give them like some financial freedom well, at the, some point in their lives. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is um, women today have to become more involved in their own lives for their children's sake, for the household's sake, and especially if they're housewives. So it is important to start knowing what you have. Living in a house and not knowing where your finances are, that's mistake number one. Um, I came, that was the marriage that I was in. And, of course. And my ex was controlling all the money. So I didn't even know that I had money. So a lot of times we don't even know we have money. We also have talents and skills. A lot of times we need to work on building those so that we'll be all right, God forbid, if we have to lean on them one day. Divorce is not the only thing that separates people. It could be sickness. That's true. It could be sickness. It could be a terminal illness your husband has. And let's say if your husband works with his hands, and if if it one or both of his hands get broken, what are you going to do? Exactly. So yeah. all of these things are important that you know your self-worth. That's a very, very good point. Women, know your self-worth. Yes. What you're able to do, what you're able, like, think outside of the box. You like, have you to. have a, a housewife that maybe is a great chef. Maybe she can do you know, bake cookies or do something. Oh, that's like a terrible misconception. Women can do more than just bake cookies and sell cookies. Yes. I don't want the hate mail to come flying in. Girls. That's not what I'm trying to say. But there's a lot of things that women can do. If women's been taking care of their books at home, they could be accountants. They can mm -hmm. do that outside of the house. Maybe it's, you know, they could open a cleaning business. They're crafty. They're painters. There's a lot of things that women can do to supplement their income or to get some income coming in. I think a lot of women just don't realize the amount of talent and courage that they have until somebody points it out for them. This is very true. So I am just gonna go in right there and say, know again your value. So a lot of times when we do get married or get in relationships, we stop working on ourselves and start working on our family and our loved ones. That's so true. And then you put yourself on the back burner yes. instead of being on the front burner where you should be. Yes. So at that point, that's when you really, really want to take the time to realize what you do. And a lot of times we have passions within ourselves, but we let our passion go to work on other people's passion. And we don't want to do that. Find out where your passion is. For me, I always loved reading and writing. So that's what made me become a consultant. So once I became a consultant, I was able to help a lot of people, and it's 
I was able to make a lot of money doing it. And you're unbelievably successful with yes. a lot of properties and a fantastic yeah. life that you have right now. I love it. Which is amazing <laughs> when you think like where you, how you got your start. I mean, that's, who was your support system that helped you get to where you are? Everybody needs one, and that's a good question. Nobody makes it alone. I don't think anybody made no, it alone. No, definitely not. And that's another thing. Know your environment. Don't let your relationships cut off your relationships. Oh, that's a good that's a good point because when women get with somebody, they stop talking to their girlfriends, they stop going out, they stop that's running a, around yes. and doing all kinds of things. Yes, so they they do. And so what I would like to say is work on yourself. And I said that in the beginning. I said know your value and definitely work on your relationships. Even though you're married, don't let your relationship take away everything that you built. Because a lot of times women see that as their identity. Oh, I'm married. I'm so-and-so. I'm Mrs. So-and-so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, that does become their identity because they didn't work on the identity before they got there. And what other, like, advice can you give for women and, like, just to take better care of themselves financially? Well, first thing I would like them to know is know what their own credit rating is. Oh, that's a very good point. And they are free. Yes. I think it's very important that you know what your own credit rating is. That is why I work with credit attorneys. That is one of the main reasons that I got involved in consulting and being able to understand the value of our credit. A lot of times we get stuck in a situation where we might not have money. We could be in a bad situation situation in a relationship with no money, but we could have great credit. Which a lot of women don't know about if they don't know where you stand financially in the household, which yes. is something else. And credit repair is so important. <gasps> Yes. If a husband had put something in the wife's name, yes. and then she's unaware of it, mm -hmm. and then she has no idea where she stands credit-wise, right. which is so important. Because I think a lot of women, a lot of people just aren't aware of the credit repair services that are available. Right, and that's why my, my consulting company is there. We are uh, credit consultants. We help people with business management, business planning, and more importantly, learning how to put their credit together. I don't want to even talk as much about credit before we go further with, um, without saying be aware, get your will and trust together as well. Oh, that's so important. Yes. Exactly. Your yeah. will and trust. And a lot of people, <clears throat> they don't do will and trust, but they should. They should. It's another topic that is not talked about. But when you think about your will, you think about your trust, you will think about, people say, well, I'm not going to die anytime soon. But you don't have to be dead for someone to have to take over your affairs. You could become ill. Yeah, or incapacitated. Or incapacitated and not be able to uh, take care of your own affairs. So when you start talking about credit, let's talk about knowing your credit score yourself. Know what your worth is. And I'm going to encourage every woman, if you don't have credit cards in your name, get them. That always helps quite a bit. Yes. You have I, to I feel like we could talk about this for another 45 <laughs> minutes, but unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. Mm -hmm. Women, know your worth, know your credit score, write a will, and think outside the box. Yes. Be creative and inventive. And thank you so much for tuning in to The G Show. Until next time.